Welcome to Centre Stage, I'm Mikhailo Curry. Canadian-Ukrainian composer Larissa Kuzmenko star continues to shine brightly. Currently, she is nominated for a Juno Award for her piano concerto. She's also just been commissioned to compose a composition for a major Canadian symphony orchestra. And lastly, but not least, her Voice of Hope commemoration of the Holodomor will be performed on December 17th. Larissa Kuzmenko, my very special guest today on Centre Stage. Toronto-based composer Larissa Kuzmenko has had her music performed and broadcast around the world by some of the finest musicians on the planet today. I started performing when I was around uh, eight or nine years old, but I started to play the piano when I was four, so I was a pianist first before I became a composer. It's an interesting story how I became a composer. Uh, I became a composer when my dad took me to Niagara Falls and he decided to take a picture of me uh, on, the, um, on the stone wall and I have severe vertigo, so I was shaking terribly. So he takes this picture and I'm just traumatized by this and I thought, oh, how do I express this emotion, you know, who do I talk to about this? So I thought, well, how about if I write a piece of music that reflects my emotion and that fear I, I put into my very first opus called The Falls, and that's the only piece I have memorized. Everything else I don't have anything, but I remember it's in C minor, and it's pretty scary, there's a shaky little part in there. <laughs> so I started at seven, and I thought, hey, this is wonderful. I can actually write music that you know, reflects my emotions, so my music became almost like a diary of my life. Well, my first um, composition teacher was Sam Dolan. It was interesting. He um, only took people on who he thought had some kind of talent and had hope. So you would bring a portfolio in those days, you know, and, you know, pile of music. So I brought in my music, and uh, he said that, you know, this is very good. I would love to teach you. And I was really thrilled to study with him because he only took a limited amount of students. And um, uh, all my pieces were very, very tonal, and I wrote a lot of sequences in those days. I remember he'd say, oh, you wrote too many sequences. Uh, you know, no more than three, that's enough. After that, it becomes corny. So I wrote a lot of corn in those days. <laughs> but then he was very helpful. He never uh, looked at the music and took pencil to paper and erased it and changed it. Like when I studied with Oscar Morris, he actually had this uh, drill eraser when I would come to study with him. He put this eraser at the end of this drill and I'd have these holes in my music. You know, we didn't have photocopying machines in those days, so I couldn't make a copy of it. But Sam was great. He would say, well, go home, uh, look at a score by Beethoven and see how he develops material and come with something uh, the following week, you know, write another sonata. Uh, before I would write things that were almost like a collage of ideas, I write one idea and another idea and so on. It was just joined together. But then I learned how to actually um, get some kind of compositional technique. Larissa Kuzmenko's voice of hope for soprano and string orchestra took her on a very personal musical journey. I actually dedicate this piece to my mother's family that died from starvation. Um, her grandmother died, her seven brothers and sisters died, uh, her stepfather died. The last person to die was her mother. Apparently uh, they came and put a sheet over her you know, face because my mom couldn't see this anymore and, and she was so traumatized by this. She was the only one survived because she went in the forest and she picked out snails off the trees and would smash them and cook them to death and just eat this and there was protein there for her where the others they had like uh, um, onions with some salt and that would just make the body um, not accept that. It would just swell up the body and they would just uh, die. It was very traumatic for her. Um, she became an orphan. She was, I don't know, maybe nine or ten years old at the time. And uh, to see everybody die one at a time um, was very difficult. And, and she told me some horror stories of things, of people eating whatever, you know. I, I don't know. Uh, to me, that is almost fiction, you know. But I wanted to write this piece of music. It's interesting, the process. Um, it's almost as if I was there. Uh, I was writing this piece in my basement. 
and there was a, a pillow that had a picture, it was a Ukrainian sort of picture of a church and, and there was snow falling, you know, and the people around it and I was thinking how cold it would have been, you know, people dying from starvation. And it was almost as if someone took my hand, put a pencil in it and, it's, and wrote this music. It just came, because sometimes you have this, you know, mental block, you know, it, it doesn't work. Um, I'd sit and look at a bar for like four hours and just go to the mall or something, do something else. But this just, it wrote itself. It made so much sense to me uh, because, uh, maybe because I was, you know, it, it's personal. I spoke to my mother about it and I could feel her emotions. I, I, many times she would be crying. I could hear her at night crying when I lived at home. And then she would bring it up again. And so I had to do something. I had to write this. And I think it's good for um, future generations to know that there is something like this available, that this has to stay alive, that people should know about it. Larissa has been nominated for a Juno Award, the highest award of merit from the Canadian music industry. This piano concerto is, is very traditional. In fact, um, uh, uh, Maestro Peter Unjin heard it. And he actually gave me a call and he said, gee, if he were a pianist, he'd be playing this piece. <laughs> so that's a real compliment, you know. I've got tremendous reviews for this CD. Uh, Christina Petroska played this uh, with, the, with the Toronto Symphony. Yes, there is a piano concerto number two and three, but they're a little bit different. One is a double concerto with piano and uh, percussion. And the other one is with um, uh, brass band. Christina Petroska, what a tremendous um, performer. And uh, she got incredible reviews for performing um, this work. And uh, I got really good reviews for the CD itself. And it's nominated? For a yeah, the Canadian Music Centre put in for a nomination for a Juno Award. There is a commission uh, coming up. Um, it's an orchestral commission and uh, it's, it's going to be one of the most exciting commissions ever for me. Uh, I can't really tell you who it's for, but it is orchestral and... Well, for a major Canadian orchestra. For a major Canadian orchestra and um, for uh, choir. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to, to writing this piece. Uh, and I got this uh, commission, the Aboriginal uh, work for orchestra. Um, and the, it was supposed to be for Orchestra London uh, and in this quartet, but they're planning to take it on tour everywhere and add a film component to this. I, I had mentioned this before. Um, I had written a work uh, for a uh, piano trio, um, a new work for little kids for uh, the great nine conservatory called Silver Birds. And um, I'm published by Plangerie. It's a new publishing company. Um, my um, choral work was just uh, uh, published by Boozy and Hawks in New York. Uh, so I'm published with Boozy and Hogs. I have several uh, pieces there. And it's really nice to hear from people from all over the world um, complimenting my, my little songs that I wrote for children. And I, I love to write for uh, children, like children's piano pieces, choral works. Just finished writing a, um, a Christmas carol for the Kingston uh, Choral, uh, Children's Choral Society. for my family, I wouldn't be in the music business, you know. I um, talk to a lot of people who, um, well, some of my students who parents are not uh, supporting them in, in their music. They really want to be musicians, but they want them to be, you know, doctors or businessmen, this sort of thing. But um, my parents were always there for me, and I'll never forget my dad. My dad was always um, driving me to my piano lesson in a hurricane. It really doesn't matter. You know, there's a tornado over there, Dad. Let's go. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're going for your piano lesson. And I'm really sorry that he's not around to, to see uh, the success that I've had now. Uh, he died in uh, 1992. Mm -hmm. But he was really, really happy that I went to Ukraine and they performed my um, Remba Vibraphone concerto there. That just made his whole life. And they actually broadcast um, a work of mine on the radio. Uh, Ukrainian work and he got to hear it.
Larissa Kuzmenko's composition, Voice of Hope, will be performed on Friday, December 17th at 8 p.m. at the Markham Center for the Performing Arts. We thank Larissa for spending time with us today. I'm Mikhailo Curry, Center Stage for Contact. See you next time.